In this screencast, I want to talk about the minimum spanning tree problem and two greedy algorithms that solve this problem efficiently. So first, some quick reviews, just to remind everybody of some important definitions in the theorem. Uh, an undirected graph is a tree if there's a unique, simple path between any pair of vertices. And what that basically boils down to is that there aren't going to, it's going to be connected and there aren't going to be any cycles. So that's the things that are true about a tree are connected, acyclic, and that the number of edges is one less than the number of vertices. These three conditions, any two of them, if any two of them hold for an undirected graph, then that implies that it's a tree. So a tree is a simple undirected graph that satisfies any of the following three conditions. And you'll notice that each one of these conditions is two out of those three things there. So it's a tree if it's connected and the number of edges is equal to the number of vertices minus one, or it's connected and it has no simple circuits, in other words, it's acyclic, or it's acyclic and it has the number of edges is one less than the number of vertices. So that's a tree. Now, a spanning tree for a graph is basically just going to be an acyclic subgraph of G that includes all of G's vertices. So basically the idea is you can connect all the vertices up um, with a minimal number of edges. A minimum spanning tree is a weighted connected graph. In a, in a weighted connected graph is a spanning tree G of minimum total weight. Well, what's the minimum total weight? It's just exactly what you'd think it would be. It's the sum of all the edge weights of the edges that are in the tree. And then the minimum spanning tree problem is, for a weighted graph, find the minimum spanning tree. So there are a number of applications of minimum spanning trees. You can think of pipelines or data communication networks. Uh, data communications network is a good thing if you wanted to connect a bunch of cities with high capacity fiber optic cable, for instance, um, what you'd like to do it in a minimum cost way, and so the minimum spanning tree would be a solution to that problem. So here's an example. Uh, we'll just go through it quickly of a minimum spanning tree. Here's a connected graph, weighted, okay, and these darker lines indicate the minimum spanning tree. You can see this has weight um, 47, if you add up 5 plus 6 plus 11 plus 15 plus 10, you get 47. And just by looking at this example, you can see that it's pretty clear this is going to be the minimum way to connect things. Notice one thing, that 9, which is a shorter edge than some of the edges in the minimum spanning tree, is not in the minimum spanning tree. And the reason basically is, and this is important, is that the other, these two edges connect B to C and D. So that is a minimum spanning tree for those three vertices. And so you can't use the nine because it would add a cycle to it. So before going on, take a few minutes and pause the screencast and think about what greedy algorithms you might be able to come up with that would find the minimum spanning tree. There are three of the three op, sort of natural ones, um, so try to get at least one and perhaps two of those, and then go on to the next slide. So three greedy approaches that work. Um, this problem is somewhat unusual in the sense that there are lots of greedy solutions. Not only is there a greedy solution that works, which doesn't happen all that frequently for problems, but in fact, this one, there are three greedy solutions for. So the first one you may have thought of is just go through and successively add the lightest edge that does not create a cycle. That's known as Kruskal's algorithm. And next, another one is to just start with from any node, it could be any node, I say root node, but any node, to grow the tree outward without creating a cycle. So in this case, you're moving, you're creating trees as you move. Here, you're going to create what's called a forest for Kruskal. Um, it's basically a number, potentially a number of different trees that you kind of coalesce eventually into one tree, as opposed to prim, where you're just growing one tree outward. And then finally, you can take the whole graph um, as your starting point, 
instead of a single vertex or a single edge, and then delete edges in order of decreasing cost, as long as you don't disconnect the tree. Uh, this doesn't really have a name that's commonly used. Uh, it, you can sort of remember it by reverse delete. So let's talk about Prim's algorithm in a little more detail. We're going to start out with a tree, T1, that's going to consist of one vertex. And we're going to grow that tree, one vertex and an associated edge at a time to produce a minimum spanning tree by using by creating this series of subtrees, T1 contained in T2, contained in three, T3, until you get to Tn, adding one edge at a time. So this is going to be a single tree that just grows one edge at a time until finally you get to Tn, and that will be the minimum spanning tree. So again, you construct Ti plus 1 from Ti by adding a vertex that's not in Ti, okay, and that's closest to the vertices already in Ti. This is the greedy step. So that's how you pick the next vertex and an associated edge to determine the growth of the tree. And the big question here is how do we do this efficiently? And I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, finally, you stop when all the vertices are included. On this slide, I want to go through an example of Prim's algorithm in action. So we'll start off at B. And that'll be the first tree, T1. And then we look at all its the vertices that are adjacent to it. So C is 6 away, D is 5 away, F is 11 away, A is 15 away. So the closest vertex to B is D. So we add D and associate its associated edge to the tree. So now this is T2. Now what we're going to do now is we look to see which vertex is closest to either B or D. So C is 6 away from B um, or 9 away from D, but so this is closer to use this edge. And then F is 12 away from D and A is 15 away, but F is only 12 away from B. As, I mean, 11 away from B rather than 12 away from D. So F is 11 away, but C is only 6 away. So we'll add that edge. So now we have, this is our subtree. This is now T3. And now we look around and find, we need to find the closest vertex to that subtree. Notice D is only 9 away, but it's already in the subtree. So the closest thing is going to be, going to be A, A, which is only 15, 15 away from, away B. from B. So now we'll add A. Okay. So now we're at T5. Okay. And then we look around and we see that E is now only 10 away from A. And so we can now add E to the tree and the edge from A to E. And now what we'll have is the spin minimum spanning tree that contains all the vertices. So here's some more detailed uh, pseudocode for Prim's algorithm. Um, and I suggest you walk through this very carefully on your own. You might pause the screencast and make sure that you understand how everything fits together. So what we'll do for each vertex, we're going to initialize two things. So for each vertex, we're going to store its current distance from the existing tree as we're growing the tree and where what the edge is, basically, that is that that you would add to the tree to get that distance. And we'll start out, and the tree will only contain some start vertex, and you will keep track of the vertices that are not yet in the tree. So it's just got the complement of, of T and B. And we'll set the start distance vertex, the distance of the start vertex to be zero. All these other distances will be some large number or uh, null. Okay, so while T is missing a vertex, find the vertex V and U which has the shortest edge distance to the group of vertices in T. So the vertex V1 and U with the shortest edge to begin with, is going to be the start vertex. Um, 
And so we'll take that out of U and add it to T. And then for all the adjacency vertices, adjacent vertices to whatever that vertex happens to be, again, the first time through, it'll just be the start vertex, we compute a new distance to T. Okay? And we do that just, for, well, all we have to do is do that for the adjacent vertices because they're the only ones that are going to potentially get closer to the tree as we grow it, as we make it larger. So as we add a vertex and an edge, the vertices that are close to that new vertex, they potentially will get closer to the tree. So you might draw a picture of that and convince yourself of that. So, and then finally, if some vertex is actually closer, so you check that, and if it is closer, then we update the distance. So the distance of the vertex that's closer, W, gets sent set to be the length of the edge between V1 and W. So that's here. That's just a simple little loop. You can see it's very easy to write code to represent this. And this is called relaxation. So if you ever hear that word, you can just think of it as this. It's sort of updating is one way to think about it. Now notice, potentially, there's quite a lot of work going on here in terms of uh, finding the vertex in U with the shortest distance uh, to the group of vertices in T, and then basically doing this update here of the distance, current distance W. In terms of you're going to have to find W and update wherever you're storing its distance. And similarly, you have to update the previous vertex that basically indicates what edge you take to get there. So let's analyze the performance of this algorithm. We're going to assume that we've got a heap implementation, in fact, a special kind of heap information uh, of a priority queue that stores the vertices that are not in the tree that's constructed so far. So back on the pseudocode, that was U. Now, what we're going to have to do is for every edge, we might possibly have to update the smallest priority weight. Um, for some vertex that's not in TI. So what that's going to mean is that we're going to have to change the priority if we're using a priority queue. We're going to have to reduce the priority. So again, if you go back and look at the pseudocode, the outer loop is going to be V times extract min. This is finding the minimum one distance a distance away. And then as you're doing that, you're going to have to do E times the changing the potentially changing the priority. So what's that going to mean? It means that if we can do a very efficient implementation of a priority queue, we'll be able to get extract min and log n time, log v time, sorry, and not only that, change the priority in big O of log v time. Notice lots of implementations that you may find and try to use will not necessarily support this change priority. So you need to be careful about that. But the overall running time is going to be the number of edges times log v. It's going to be dominated by the changing the priority operations. And again, this assumes the implementation supports an efficient change priority operation. OK, the other greedy algorithm I want to consider is Kruskal's. Remember how Kruskal works. We're going to start out with by sorting the edges in non-decreasing order of lengths, so shortest ones first. And we're going to create a forest of single vertex trees. So each vertex is going to represent a tree. Then we're going to loop over the sorted edges. And for each edge, we'll check to see if V and W are in separate trees. If V and W are in separate trees, then we know the edge doesn't create a cycle, right? If they're in the same tree, then it would create a cycle. But if they're in separate trees, then it won't create a cycle. And so if they're in separate trees, then we combine the two trees. So each time we find an edge that is not, that has its vertices in separate trees, this will shrink the forest by one tree. And we keep doing this until only a single tree remains. Notice we may go through this from somewhere between n minus 1 times, if we're extremely lucky, or up to, all the way up to the number of edges. So it uses 
two find operations to test if B and W are in separate trees. In other words, each tree is going to have a label that distinguishes it, and we just have to check to see if B and W, each their trees have the same label or not. And then we'll do one union, if they're in separate trees, then we'll do one union operation to combine the trees. Both of these, with a very efficient implementation, can be done in log uh, V time. So here's an illustration of how Cresco works on the same graph that we did for Prim. So we sort the edges. So the first edge in the sorted list will be 5. B and D are in separate trees to start here. So we'll add this edge between B and D. Okay. Then the next edge is going to be the 6 edge. And this goes between B and C. Uh, B and D are one tree. C is still its own tree. So this edge connects two separate trees. So we'll add it. Then the next edge in the list, sorted list, is going to be the edge from D to C. But we notice that D and C are both in the same tree. So we do not add that edge. Then the next edge to be... Uh, in our sorted list is going to be the edge from A to E, and that's 10 long. And so, um, and A and E are in separate, they're still individual vertex trees, by the way, so they're in separate trees, and so we'll add that edge. So now we look for the next shortest edge, and that edge is going to be the edge from B to F, that's 10 long, and so F is, and B are in separate trees. So they're not in the same tree. And so we can add that edge. And so we've got this picture over here. So we look at the next edge. The next edge is 12. Those are in the same, those connect vertices in the same tree. And then, then we look at the next edge and that's 15. Uh, B and A are in different subtrees. So we'll add that edge. will be our final edge in the minimum spanning tree. Notice we got the same minimum spanning tree here um, that we did in Prim's algorithm. Uh, this doesn't happen all the time. It, one thing that made it happen in this case is that all the edge distances are distinct from one another. So again, I want to emphasize the key to efficient implementation of Kruskal skull is a fast way to test if an edge creates a cycle in the minimum spanning tree force generated during the algorithm. And also... Um, being able to take the union of two trees to create the larger tree. Um, and the way we do that is check to see if there's a cycle by checking whether to see the vertices are in the same connected component or not. This data structure that typically gets used here is something called a union find data structure because those are the two operations for which it is optimized. Okay. Um, the more general version of this, rather than subtrees, is it takes stores disjoint subsets of some set. You can check to see if two elements are in the same subset, and you have a fast way of combining subsets. So that's it for some simple greedy algorithms. In some future screencasts, I'm going to talk about how to prove that uh, Prim's algorithm is correct.